There's a charming story um, by a, a, an African writer, Abiosa Nicole, called The Truly Married Woman, in which a man who is living with a woman and actually has several children with her, they finally decide that to get married. And they, 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 they then go through a, a, a custom. He must go to her house. She returns to her father's house. He then travels to her father's house and must ask for her. And they then bring out, not her, but her sisters, her cousins, her friends, her neighbors, each time saying, ah, here she is. And he must each time say, no, 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 that's not the woman I want. I raise this, it's not an exact metaphor, but it's not unlike the writing experience. You'll have an idea that you want a word, and then you'll think of some words. And often the word that comes to you is a cousin, a sister, keep saying as, as you go through the review process, keep interviewing, keep waiting, to, keep, keep uh, entering more, uh, entertaining more possibilities until the right one comes in. Let's pretend that the assignment was write, using second person, write a poem about someone you love. This is not the way Sylvia Plath wrote the poem, but let's imagine how might the poet have started writing the first few stanzas. One of the biggest problems that you have, that we have, all of us have, is that we've been trained to write expositionally. We've been trained to work deductively. We've been trained to explain. Then how do you get there? Well, you begin with anything. You begin with the first draft, and the rule of a first draft is to just get the black on the white, the ink on the page. So let's say she wrote, you were a child of love. Ted and I both loved each other then. Here's a reference to her husband, Ted Hughes. Our love was wonderful, warm, golden. OK, she's warming up. I remember Mrs. Fiore, the midwife from downstairs, making you cry. Now she's, now she's, now she's getting to some specifics. The clock ticking on the hospital wall. I remember how fat you are, your little bald head. All right, now on this side I want to say, here's some prompts. Move from abstractions to particular images. Now let's say she stops there and then says, okay, let me start again. Love got you started, because she mentions love here several times. Be specific and concrete. Look to the draft for help. Well, she compared her love to gold. Love got you started like a fat gold clock. Well, can we refine that? Love set you going like a fat gold watch, which is a more, perhaps, delicate image and actually is, is the, are the opening lines of the poem. The midwife made you cry. Be specific. Appeal to the senses. The midwife, how did the midwife make the baby cry? The midwife slapped your foot soles and your naked cry. All right, now what are we doing? Now we're looking for cousins, sisters, friends, until we get the right one? Your naked cry, your shill cry, your bald cry, which is nice because, you know, babies have those little nice little bald heads unless they have big, you know, unless they have that wonderful, some have marvelous full heads of hair. But there's something nice about bald cry. Your bald cry, and as, and as we mentioned last time, bald also plays with the word bald, B-A-W-L, to cry. Your bald cry filled the room. Your bald cry filled the silence of the room. Your bald cry, let us know you're, uh, we're alive. Your bald cry took its place in the room with us. Your bald cry took its place among the elements. Do you see the step-by-step, -step, the step-by-step -step progression? You can certainly write these lines and then through a series of refinement, step closer, take out the abstractions, move from abstractions to particular images. Let's continue. Flickers among the flat pink ro roses. I wake to listen. It was as if I could hear the empty roar of the room. Uh, maybe a little cliched. It was like I was holding a big conch shell to my ear. Do you ever do that? You get one of those big seashells and then you hear the sea or you hear, you hear the sound. 
of air within that confined space. It was like holding a seashell to my ear. It was like I could hear the roar of the sea. I could hear the sea in my ear. A sea roared in my, roared in my ear. Right, but is that too loud? A far sea? Okay, make the sea far away. Because if we move further away from a source of a sound, it becomes more mute. Good, that quiets it a bit. A far sea roars in my ear. The verb is still too loud. Okay, a far sea sings in my ear. Singing sea. A far sea splashes in my ear. <coughs> Rather clumsy. A far sea tumbles in my ear. Still not right. A far sea moves in my ear. That's it. Word after word after word after word. Cousin after cousin. Sister, friend, neighbor. Until the right one comes in.